So many of you may be wondering what the hell happened to uh, Sea Sprite the Sea Sprite, my um, CE Rider built 30 foot Sea Sprite, 1984 Sea Sprite. If you recall, uh, it was down at Regent Point and I was doing a lot of work on it. I'd stopped a lot of leaks that had uh, the engine overhauled and really it, uh, made the boat right. Um, for sailing, I was going to take it down to the Outer Banks and I was going to use it on the weekends. And uh, then there were some changes in plans over the summer, as there usually are with boat owners. And I thought to myself, what, am I crazy? Why do I have two boats? This is insane. I better sell it. And so I listed it on eBay. Uh, I listed it once. Didn't make the reserve, although there were a lot of bids. And so I relisted it and within uh, two or three days, um, I had a buyer. And uh, the buyer was quite interested, you know, he committed to paying me uh, $26,000 for the boat. And uh, I told him that uh, I was going to bring it up to uh, the Annapolis area anyway. And since he was from the Annapolis area, he might want to come down and sail the boat with me and make sure he really wanted to buy it. Um, and that's what he did. And uh, you can read that story uh, on the Sea uh, Sprite blog at csprite30.blogspot.com. Um, but it was an interesting trip. In the end, uh, I decided I didn't really want to sell the boat, and I was able to convince the buyer that this wasn't the boat for him. And we got it up here to Harrington Harbor North, had it hauled out, and uh, put on the hard here. And it's been here since uh, around the 1st of July. Um, on the trip up, discovered that the uh, rudder shaft stuffing box was leaking. And so I had that uh, repaired. So the rudder shaft stuffing box has been repacked. Um, I've done some additional work. If you recall, I uh, tried to rehab uh, the old port light uh, lenses and so that they would be more clear. And I had some success using a polishing compound to do that. But in the end, I realized that that was just not acceptable. And so I've removed the... Uh, half of the port lights, the port that extends into the cabin, and uh, I'm replacing the lenses with uh, auto safety glass with a light tint to it. So uh, you'll see that the, each of the port lights is covered with plastic right now, so that in case it rains, um, we won't have any more water intrusion, right? And uh, we've also done a little work, uh, which I'll show you when I go up on the boat. Um, so stand by. So you may have recalled that the boat was originally named Wind Courser, and uh, I had renamed it Sea Sprite, but I had not had the opportunity to actually um, change the uh, name and the home port on the transom. Uh, and when I brought it up here and put it on the hard, I was able to take off the old name. And I've had the new name uh, with an interesting uh, logo attached to the uh, transom. Unfortunately, I've just found this today, uh, South County Signs has come out and done this today, but they have not done um, what I asked unless they're only halfway done. I have asked for the name and the home port to be in white with a thin gold outline, and all I see is gold right now. So I'm hoping that either there's another layer maybe that goes over, but I suspect that there's just been a mistake and they're going to have to come out here and remove the name and the home port again and put on uh, the correct lettering and the correct color combination. But anyway, you get an idea of what we're doing there. I thought that uh, flying fish with the trident was pretty cool, kind of stole that from Patagonia. But I thought uh, with, the, with the name Sea Sprite that, uh, that that flying fish with the trident was a great representation of a Sea Sprite. So if you recall from the earlier video, I was uh, talking about how a previous owner had painted over the non-skid on the decks and that most of that paint had peeled off and it was pretty unsightly. I was able to further remove significant portions of that paint using a pressure washer, although there is some paint remaining and I didn't quite finish the job. There's some paint that's very very well adhered around some areas. You can see around that chain plate there, there's some paint that is stubbornly ad adhering to, um, to the deck. And then there's some areas where I have just not 
been able to complete the job. I ran out of time. But this is still bothering me, this, uh, this sort of shabby appearance to the deck. This is really a classic boat with classic lines. It's a beautiful boat, and it bothers me that the deck is not uh, as beautiful as the rest of the boat. So I'm working on a plan to repaint the deck. How extensive I go with that is still under consideration because uh, if I had it done professionally, um, I've got quotes upwards of $15,000 to unbed all of the hardware, take the deck down, uh, apply new grip techs, apply all grip. Um, that's a pretty expensive job for a boat that's arguably only worth about twenty-five dollars or $26,000. So I think that's going to be a non-starter, and I'm going to have to come up with a, a simpler but yet uh, ideally as beautiful solution for the deck. So stepping up on top of the cabin roof, I'm going to look back down. Um, you see I've removed the canvas uh, bimini and dodger so that... Uh, we could work more easily on the boat and so they don't get caught in the wind and, and torn while it's on the hard. I did have this uh, handrail you see here on the cabin roof uh, completely rebed. It turns out that it was the one um, weak link in the cabin's watertight, um, watertight condition. Um, it needed to be rebed because water was coming in around uh, some of the bolts and then seeping through the core and coming out around one of the port lights. And uh, we've got that all repaired and I'll show that, show that to you hopefully when we go inside. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. But we were able to repair all the damage around that uh, port light, all the damaged uh, teak veneer. Looks quite nice now. And I do believe the boat is 100% watertight at this point, fingers crossed. So this is a, a view of that one port light that was had the very delaminated um, teak around it. And you can see that there's still some noticeable delamination, but now it's very well adhered. Um, it's not moving when you push on it. And all in all, it looks 100% better than it did. Almost unnoticeable, and I think once we get uh, things cleaned up, slap a little teak oil on there, it'll be 100% unnoticeable. You can see that the uh, port light lenses are out of each of the port lights. I'm going to get glass into those. One of the other great things we did, I don't know if I showed it to you before, but up here in the V-berth, there was an area where um, the vertical piece of wood there that runs from the sole up to the V-berth had um, gotten broken up and there was some cracks in the veneer uh, and it really just didn't look nice. And also each time somebody came in there uh, and bumped their foot up against it, it just made it worse. So I went and got uh, two pieces of wood, um, curved it to match uh, the curvature of the V-berth and uh, covered that damaged area and that protects that uh, veneer so that uh, it would not continue to crack any further and it certainly makes uh, the V-berth look a lot nicer. And so um, once we get the uh, port lights back in, I think the boat's basically ready to go back in the water. There's one other project I want to do and that is I want to refinish the, uh, the sole, the cabin sole. Um, I don't think it's going to take too much. I mean, there are a few areas where there's some scratching. You can see that. But I think uh, be able to sand it pretty easily and put a couple of coats of semi-gloss Helmsman down and it will really pop. Um, it will make the whole interior look very nice. As you can see, most of the interior is in quite good shape with the exception of that area around that one port light, which is now in much better condition. But we get this uh, cabin sole uh, refinished, throw a little semi-gloss semi varnish on it, and I think it's going to be quite beautiful. I also took out the uh, must have been 20-year-old Standard Horizon uh, VHF radio and replaced it with a new version. This one 
uh, will accept a, uh, a remote mic and control that I can run to the, uh, to the helm. So I'm looking forward to installing that. And I've also purchased a uh, Lorantz uh, HDS7 uh, GPS chart plotter that's uh, sort of inter interchangeable between this boat and the uh, Cabo Rico. So um, we'll have this boat ready to go um, in terms of electronics and uh, systems um, by the time it's launched in a, in a couple of weeks. So uh, you can see that uh, we now have the uh, name and the home port uh, fully complete. I think it's pretty cool looking. Turned out very nice. And I was wrong about, uh, about South County Signs. They were doing exactly what they're supposed to do. It uh, is a two layer job. So they laid down the uh, gold text first. They came back with a second layer of the white vinyl and applied that and uh, so we get the two-tone two-tone look so there she is uh, sea sprite the sea sprite um, just about ready to go back in the water and the plan will be to get her back in the water either on or before Labor Day weekend and then start moving her south and I might take her I might take her a long way south over the next couple of months sort of in stages Get her down to the southern end of the bay, then maybe down to North Carolina, maybe Ocracoke, Oriental, Beaufort, jump outside, get down to Florida, maybe leave her in Stewart, and then uh, come down there regularly and take her over to the islands. Anyway, stay tuned, and uh, I'll try to update more often about the uh, adventures of Sea Sprite, the 1984 CE Rider, Sea Sprite 30.